Hi, I'm Stu from Hive Mind Automation and welcome back to The Hive. In this video, we'll be talking a bit about my electricity retailer, Amber Electric, including integrating pricing data from them into Home Assistant to improve the energy dashboard data and to get some more insights into how much we're spending on electricity. So while I roll the intro, take a moment to subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified when I release new videos each week. And let's get started. So a bit over a year ago, I made a change to my electricity retailer looking for a better deal. And on the recommendation of my brother, I signed up for Amber Electric. Now in terms of electricity retailers, Amber Electric are a little bit unique in that they pass on the wholesale energy pricing from the distributor to their customers. This does present a challenge, however, because the wholesale electricity price tends to fluctuate and it can change every 30 minutes. Those fluctuations in price can be both good and bad for you, the consumer, and in most cases, the half hourly rate is significantly less than you would pay per kilowatt hour through other energy retailers, but in some cases you may pay a little bit more. It also depends on how many renewables are in the grid at that time. If we take a quick look at the Amber Electric website, you'll see that their whole idea is saving you money while you save the planet, accessing cheap wholesale energies and boosting the renewable energy revolution. Uh, and you can see right on the website to help you plan for the pricing fluctuations, they also have a mobile app. And recently they also started offering an API so that you can get pricing data specifically for your account through an API. Before we dive into the API, let's take a quick look at the mobile app. So I'll open up Amber Electric over here on my phone. And you can see right off the bat, we're currently paying 26 cents per kilowatt hour, and there are 56% renewables in the grid. Now, I can also flip over to here, and I can see that I've actually got a negative feed-in tariff. So my solar energy, uh, I'm getting negative one cent. I'm paying one cent per kilowatt hour to feed that solar energy back into the grid. Now I'm not too worried about this because uh, here in Victoria at least, we are guaranteed a minimum of 10 cents per kilowatt hour to feed back into the grid. Uh, so this value is not necessarily accurate. Uh, but if I pop back over here, we'll see that 26 cents per kilowatt hour, now that is actually, mm, it's not great. Uh, if we take a look at uh, earlier today, you'll see that I was paying, uh, so we've got the uh, general usage forecast down the bottom here and also the past. And you'll see here that at around 2.30, we were paying 9 cents per kilowatt hour, uh, you know, and earlier this morning, uh, as little as 7 cents per kilowatt hour at around, at around 11.30. Uh, and we also get a bit of a forecast here as well. So it's expected that it's going to go up to 28, 29 cents, uh, even as much as 36 cents per kilowatt hour at 7.30 tonight. 26 cents per kilowatt hour is probably about what most people would be paying per kilowatt hour on a standard fixed rate plan or even on a, a time of use tariff such as uh, you know peak off peak rates. But you'll see that these 31 cent and 36 cent prices, those are actually fairly high. And when you see stuff like this, these uh, orange and red prices, you can plan ahead and plan to use your energy earlier in the day or during times where the pricing is not quite so steep. Uh, so we've got a summary here. It says it's cheap and green to use energy right now. Now, 26 cents per kilowatt hour is probably more than I'd necessarily want to be paying. 
it is a dull and dreary day here in Melbourne, so it's kind of expected that there's not a lot of renewables in the grid. Uh, down the bottom, we've, so we've got our live prices tab. We can also tap on usage here and it'll give us our usage cost, our total usage in kilowatt hours and the percent of renewables that we've used and how much our solar exports were. Now that's going to be up until the previous day because the meter data hasn't actually been pulled in just yet to the system here and we can uh, also see a bit of a graph about our energy usage and the pricing per kilowatt hour that we saw. So um, you know, we were feeding back into the grid from pretty much uh, 8 o'clock through till uh, 4.30 uh, and then uh, for most of that time you'll see uh, that the prices were fairly low so we probably would have been better off using electricity. Uh, so we've got our uh, all meters, we've got general usage and we've got solar so we can see uh, you know, our total earnings for solar, the CO2 displaced uh, and the total exported there as well and the average export price was zero cents per kilowatt hour. Uh, we can see some information about how much we've saved and we can do a view more on that as well. And we can also see our lifetime average price paid is about 20.11 cents per kilowatt hour, which is 28% uh, less than the Victorian default offer. We can also tap on settings here uh, and uh, I'll need to obviously blur out my site address and the account owner data there. Uh, but you can see we can set custom price notifications. We can get price spike alerts via the app and also via SMS. Uh, and there's some FAQs that we can view here as well, which takes us to the web. So that's the Amber Electric mobile app, but obviously that's not super useful for us in the context of Home Assistant. So let's take a look at pulling the pricing data into Home Assistant so that we can make our energy dashboard a bit more interesting. So first things first, I've signed into uh, Amber Electric's website so that I can get some details. And if I click on the settings here over on the left hand side, we see again our site details and my account uh, details. Um, but we can also turn on the developer mode and uh, shows that we've got that turned on already and that you can generate tokens and view the documentation on the developers page. So if we click the for developers page here, we've got our API tokens, which I've already got that API token. Uh, um, we can generate a new one. We can turn developer mode on and off. Uh, and there's some documentation for how we can uh, grab that data. Uh, and we've also got the open API spec there as well. So if you are just getting started and you haven't already created a token, we can click generate a new token and I'm going to call this home assistant demo and I'm going to generate that token and I'm then going to copy that token uh, and it says right here, remember to take note of your API tokens now because they're going to disappear once we refresh the page. Um, so I've already copied that and I'm going to refresh the page and you'll see the token has disappeared. So I'll obviously delete this after we've completed the video because I don't want you guys using my token data. Back over in Home Assistant, we're on our main dashboard here. I'm going to hit configuration, integrations. I'm going to add an integration and I'm going to search for Amber and we've got Amber Electric. We'll click on that and we're going to paste in our API token and click submit. Straight away, we now select the NMI or the national meter identifier of the site that we're on. So I'm gonna select that one. It's the only one there and we can give our site a name and I'm just going to call it the hive uh, and obviously blur out anything that is uh, sensitive here and we'll click submit. So we've created the configuration for the Hive, we'll hit finish and we'll see we've got the Hive Amber Electric there and it's created six entities and I can click on that. We've got our feed-in forecast, feed-in price, general forecast, general price, price spike uh, and the renewables. So these sensors are all useful uh, and we can take a look at that. So if I go to the overview and I'm going to search for Hive and we will find that there's quite a few of those. So in our binary sensors, we've got 
price spike, uh, so that is currently off. We're not experiencing a price spike at the moment. In our sensor section, we'll scroll down and we've got our feed-in forecast, price, general forecast and price, and also the renewables percentage. There. And so we've got that information in Home Assistant, and now we could potentially use this information to trigger or condition some automations. For example, if we're producing quite a lot of solar energy, uh, but the feed-in tariff is below a certain threshold, we could start turning on things to burn the energy rather than export it to the grid. Or also if our general price is high, we can start turning things off uh, that we don't necessarily want to be running because it might be costing us a bit more to run those at that time. Now the obvious place where this information is going to be particularly useful is on our energy dashboard. So if we pop over to the energy dashboard, we'll see uh, we've already got that set up from the previous video. Uh, and in the previous video, I also set up a very basic a static rate for feed-in tariff, uh, but I've removed that for clarity in this video. You'll see that here in our sources, uh, we've just got our uh, energy values. We don't have any pricing information. What we can do if we head over to configuration and then click on energy is in our electricity grid data here, we can click on the edit next to our energy meter delivered. And if I go to use an entity with the current price and click the drop down, and I'm going to search for hive and we've got search and we want general price because this is our consumption. And I'm going to save that. And then with our return to the grid, I'm going to click on the edit here, use an entity with the current rate again, click on the drop down, and I'm going to search for Hive again, and we're going to grab the feed in price as well. So this is our production. So we hit save there. Now at the moment, the percentage of renewables isn't particularly useful um, in this uh, context, uh, but we will uh, potentially look at that in another episode. Uh, so we don't need to touch solar panels. I'm going to take a look at battery storage in another video uh, and gas consumption. Unfortunately, at the moment, we don't have the ability to get that in Australia, but apparently that is useful in the EU. Uh, hopefully one day we'll get that data in Australia. So now that I've made those changes to the electricity grid settings, if we pop back over to our energy dashboard, you'll see now that we've got this cost column and an estimate of our usage costs for the day. It is worth noting that this is in euros uh, because the vast majority of developers for uh, Home Assistant uh, are in the EU, um, but you can just substitute out the currency symbol there and it should be fine. If we pop over to our production Home Assistant instance and we scroll down, you'll see that we've got much better data here because we've had this information being pulled into Home Assistant for a few days now. Uh, and some enhancements to the Home Assistant energy dashboard is we can now go to the week view and we can actually get an idea of our weekly costs. Uh, and we can even also go to month uh, and look at those uh, details there as well. Uh, I've only had this set up for uh, less than a week, so my weekly costs are not even quite complete there, uh, and my monthlies are definitely not complete. But if we pop back to daily, uh, it looks like I've used about 84 cents worth of electricity today, uh, and my uh, feed in tariff hasn't quite worked as well as I would have liked. Okay. So that's the Amber Electric integration in Home Assistant. And now that we've got this data coming into Home Assistant, as I mentioned before, we can also use this pricing data as triggers or conditions in our automations as well, such as only turning on larger loads when the energy pricing is low or switching off those larger loads when the pricing is high. If you are in Victoria, South Australia, New South Wales, the ACT or Southeast Queensland, and you're looking for a new energy retailer to save some money and also accelerate Australia's adoption of a renewable energy future, my referral code for Amber Electric is in the video description down below. If you sign up using my referral code, you'll get money off your first bill and I'll get money off my next bill too which is a big help to my production costs. 
That is all we have for this video and I do hope that it helped you in your home automation journey. Be sure to comment down below with a home automation idea that you'd like to see me cover in a future video. Don't forget to follow HiveMind Automation on Twitter, Instagram and Facebook and those links are also in the video description below. If you like this video hit the thumbs up button down below to give it a like and if you're not already subscribed please consider doing so now. While you're at it, you can also hit the bell icon so you get notified when I release new videos each week. If you're looking for a VPN provider, there is an affiliate link for NordVPN in the video description as well. I've chosen to partner with NordVPN because they've got the best infrastructure of any of the VPN providers that I've seen. They also have a strict no logs policy and servers all over the planet. On top of that, they've got apps for just about every platform around, including Windows, Mac, Linux, iOS, and Android. So no matter what platform you're using, you can protect your information while you browse the web. So get a VPN today and use my link below to sign up for NordVPN. Lastly, if you like what I'm doing here and you want to help to support the channel, but you're not in the market for a VPN provider, I've placed a buy me a coffee link in the video description below. Contributions through Buy Me A Coffee are put towards making more and better content for you to enjoy. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Stu from Hive Mind Automation and I'm looking forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now.